That's what you're not going to be carrying around basswood when you're when you're out in the st sticks, are you? Right. Cool beans, right? Hey folks, I'm out on the trail today, and I thought I'd stop and do a little knife review for you. We're going to, today. We're going to review the K Bar Dozier. This is an interesting little budget knife. I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Stay with me now. Okay. All right, so every prepper, every uh, homesteader should have a good selection of pocket knives. Uh, you should have some that you carry with you every day, your EDC. Uh, I rotate mine a lot. You should have some that you throw in your vehicle, some that you throw in your bug out bag, your get home bag, all kinds of stuff like that. And you wanna have some extras because inevitably you're gonna run across a buddy who doesn't have one and he's gonna say, hey, can I borrow your knife? Do you really wanna give him your $300 knife for that? No. You don't, you're gonna give them something like this. This is the K-Bar Dozier. And this is an interesting little knife. I wasn't sure when I first got it if I was gonna like it, but I'm gonna tell you, I've been using this thing for over a year now. I've been, I took it on multiple camping trips, done some bushcrafting with it. So this is not new out of the box. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but uh, it's definitely got some scratches and dings. And there you go. Now you can see it right on near the tip up here. Got some scratches and dings. The coating is starting to wear off, but all that means, folks, is that I've been working this blade out, and that's what you want. You want you want a good test like that. So let's talk about this a little bit. The K-Bar Dozier hunting knife was created around 2001 by Bob Dozier for K-Bar. It is a lock point. See the, the locking uh, mechanism is on the back here. You don't see that too much now with more modern knives. Uh, that's kind of a feature that's been replaced by more modern mechanisms. I'm not in love with it, but at the time, it worked really well and it does create a nice solid lockup. There is no wobble here at all, folks. Really, really good. It feels like a fixed blade knife. It's a drop point blade, which is fine. Multi-purpose that does the does the work for just about all kinds of stuff. Uh, the only the only there's only a few examples where you'd need like maybe something different, like a tanto knife or something like that. Drop point's great, great option for the blade tip. Overall length is 7.25 inches. Blade length is three inches itself. Width of the blade is 0 0.875 inches. Thickness of the blade is 0 0.11 inches. This weighs 0.15 of a pound. It is very, very lightweight. You will almost forget that it's in your pocket. Blade is a hollow grind 8A Oz, Oz 8A stainless steel. Uh, what does that mean for the layperson? So Oz 8A, 8A is not a high-end steel, but it's not super low-end either. It's it's fine. Uh, it's just going to it's need a little bit more sharpening more frequently than your high carbon blades. But the trade-off again, of course, is that you're, it's more corrosion resistant. All the stainless steels are more corrosion resistant. The blade has a Rockwell hardness of 56 to 58 CR. It's a Zytel handle. Now, this is one thing I do want to make a comment about. Out of the box, it's gonna if you're if you're a knife connoisseur, it is gonna feel really weird. My first impressions of this out of the box was, wow, that feels like really cheap plastic. But as it turns out, uh, Zytel is a proprietary polymer. Polymers are harder than you know just straight plastic. I don't know how else to explain that. And uh, a lot of people had the first imp same first impression that I did with this knife in that they uh, they felt like it feels cheap, right? But it's actually, Zytel holds up really, really well to use and abuse. Uh, it's it's done fine. I've, I, I tend to prefer G10 scales myself, but you know, for the price point that you're getting this one at, and that's the next part I'm gonna get to, for the price point that you're getting this at, you are gonna have to give some stuff up. And Zytel is a great compromise on cost where it still is very, very sturdy and is gonna hold up for a really long time to tons of abuse. It's got a deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible, as is the thumb stud there, so that ought to make you south paws happy. Um, let's talk about what's the pros of this. So this is for the money. This is one of the best budget blades out there. I can I say that now. I, I wanted to give this one a good thorough test and I've been working with it for over a year, I, I honestly think if I, when I bought this, it might've been almost two years ago, uh, but it's gone on a lot of trips with me. I've done a lot of bushcrafting with it. I've, you know, I've used it for everything you could possibly think of, except batoning, cause that's stupid. I wouldn't do that with this, but <laughs> the, for the money, you can't go wrong with this one, okay? Now, can this outperform, you know, some of my blades that are, that are much higher end? No. Can it keep with, can it run the pack with it? Yeah, it can, it can keep pace, it can keep pace. And this is a good one I'm gonna recommend. Well, 
Let me show you a couple other things. I'll come back at the end and, and give you my final thoughts. Now, this blade will take an edge pretty easily and I'm using the Wazoo Survival Gear uh, wet, uh, Viking Whetstone here, which I will put a coupon code there. Uh, Sarge, sorry, couldn't find my word. Sarge2021 uh, over on wazoosurvivalgear.com can get you 5% off this. And of course, I'll get a little commission off that too, which I really appreciate. It's one of the ways you can help the channel. But uh, yeah, this takes it pretty easily. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. This steel, the Aus 8, is going to need a little bit more frequent work than, say, like a high carbon steel. But the trade-off, of course, is that the stainless steels, which don't hold an edge quite as long, uh, tend to be more corrosion-proof. So it's always a trade-off when you're making a decision about steel. Oz 8 is uh, not a bad steel. It's just a little bit on the lower end, so you're going to have to work your work your knives a little bit longer, I mean, a little bit more frequently. And uh, so I like this. Whoops. Uh, I like this Viking Whetstone. It's nice to throw, get a couple of these, throw them in your uh, get home bag, your bug out bag, throw one in your car, throw one in your hiking bag. They're really nice. All right, so let's see how that looks. I think that's pretty good. If you see something in comments, let me know. I, I welcome the feedback. All right, a little piece of basswood here. Let's just kind of basswood's pretty soft but I've got a stick here that I'll show you in a second too I'll test it with that too okay no problems there definitely and I have used I have feather stick with this with uh with you know sticks that I found in the woods this has gone on a few camping trips with me now I've done some plenty of bush crafting with it and it's it's held up really well uh it like i said the only thing is you are gonna have to sharpen it a little bit more okay there we go look at that okay, so that's basswood i would expect it to be able to do that all right hello ant hello ant i know i'm in your territory all right no problems all right so you can you know, definitely do a lot of bushcrafting with this and kind of figure out what you want to... I'll show you something real quick here. A little bit more. Right. So you could... Um, Notches like that, notches like that. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with bushcrafting, like making tent pegs. Also, if you do any kind of snaring or uh, deadfall traps, things like that, you need to be able to. This is a skill you want to practice. You want to be able to make notches like grooves like that because that's a lot of the stuff is gonna, that's going to require that. And then you're going to make another one that looks like that, and it will hook in there. Okay. that up later on. Alright. Good. Alright, let's take a look at the stick here real quick. I'll just kind of go down. Well, I'll go in the middle here. Okay. A little bit harder, obviously. I could wet this down. That's dry right now. Alright, not bad. Not bad. A little, a little harder, but handle in the task. All right, let's wet it down just a little bit here. Let's see. Yeah, we're good, very good. And like I said, I've already tested this for over a year, so I'm just kind of doing this for you all to kind of show you. A little bit more work than the basswood, but this is that's what you're not going to be carrying around basswood when you're when you're out in the st sticks, are you? 
right? There we go. Cool beans, right? All right, final thoughts on this K Bar Dozier. And there you go, you got your one handed opening. I forgot to show you that earlier. Uh, a little more tricky because of that lock back to do the, the one handed closure. Um, but you know what? Small, again, you have to make some compromises here. The, what do I, what would I recommend this for? So this is if you are on a budget and you want a good folder, uh, that, that's gonna, you know, do all the work for you, do everything that you, that you can want it to do, can't go wrong. Okay. Now, if you are somebody who's a little bit more of a knife snob and you're not buying, you're not going to carry around anything less than a hundred dollar pocket knife, that's fine. Uh, you still might want to have a few of these laying around to lend to a friend, throw in the truck, throw in the bug out bag, throw in the get home bag, uh, whatever, because this is a very, very solid beater and you can't go wrong with this, okay? So how much did it cost? Well, when I bought mine, it was about $20. Unfortunately, with inflation, uh, the cheapest that I've seen was around $24 recently, but more often I'm seeing them in the $30 range at this point. I'll drop a link down below. If you use my link, uh, you will get, uh, I'll get a little commission off of it at no extra charge to you. But yeah, can't recommend, can't recommend this one enough is in terms of like a good beater knife, good workhorse. And when you get yours, it should come with a box like that. Sorry, am I showing you? Yeah, is it reversing? I hope not. All right, nice little box. Um, but yeah, this is a good one. I hope you enjoyed this knife review. If you have, don't forget to drop a like. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Check out my other knife reviews, which I will put in the end cards and also up here. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can also use Super Thanks down below, or you can just watch some of my ads. I really appreciate it either way. It really helps me out. It helps me to create more content for you, okay? Keep planting your seeds. Keep stacking your silver. This is Prepping with Sarge. <laughs>